certain others the koi and the sand in southern Africa. Over centuries, Western societies destroyed their way of life, dispossessed of land, language and eventually their culture. In what is called the Durbanville Declaration, a call was made for justice. I think in a particular way there was people said we had a Truth and Reconciliation Commission but that Truth and Reconciliation Commission in no way highlighted the foundation, the story of the foundational uh, nation as well. And, the, and it's like that's an issue whose time has come there are, because there are Truth and Reconciliation Commission coming up all over the world. I mean we followed Latin America, others followed us. Um, but we haven't had that internationally, the story of pain and hurt and acknowledgement, which in itself is part of the journey of healing. There's a reawakening among indigenous people around the world. The human rights of indigenous people are absolutely essential and integral to a world where human rights are respected. The UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People is a, s a simple restatement of the basic human rights that the UN and, and the world recognizes applied to the unique situation of Indigenous people. And a renewed call from the Khoi and the San to be acknowledged as the first peoples of Southern Africa. I think in this country, uh, I think this is the first uh, thing that we would like to see, and this is the great conversation, to be recognized. To, uh, for there to be acknowledgement uh, of the wrong that has been done. But not only that, that this must be connected to some form of restitution because it's about justice for all, uh, as uh, included in our Bill of Rights. And so it will have implications in terms of uh, political representation, economic representation, and then the whole restitution of land. Only healing can facilitate reconciliation and justice. Mariska Boerta, SABC News, 